Hey, Christopher. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, awesome, yay. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on the OG Rose Spotify podcast. It is a joy to have you here. And yeah, I'm delighted to get to speak with you about authenticity and any other topic that comes up. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I've been looking forward to it. I was just doing some last minute uh, thoughts on it. So yeah. I'm excited to talk about it today. Yeah, me too. I feel like it's such a it's such a big topic. Um, it, it feels like you can approach it from many, many different angles. Um, so yeah, I think something that uh, we talked a little bit about this, but authenticity, it feels like something that is like what on one hand really wonderful and something that I do believe is a real thing. Um, but I think it's hard for it not to get kind of usurped by, um, you know, just wh whatever it is, the, just the concept of it or, or like the promotion of authenticity then becomes something that's challenging because one then thinks, oh, well, am I, am I being my authentic self? And, and there seems to be, it seems to require some sort of sense of self and self-reference, but at the same time, it can be a little bit like the centipede that you ask, like, how are you using all those legs? And it just stops and freezes and says, like, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know what you mean, and I don't know how to explain it. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a concept like that, where I think it seems to be, on one hand, very helpful, on the other hand, possibly risky, simply because yeah. um, it, it can be something where we kind of wonder if we have it or, or question about it like that and, and almost wonder if something's wrong with us if we don't feel like we're being authentic. But maybe there is something wrong and it needs to be resolved. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of a lot. Um, just of course, uh, I agree with uh, what you were saying, especially about kind of the freezing up with the centipede, mm -hmm. because I was thinking about how ethics, we keep praising people like being true to yourself, mm -hmm. know thyself and things like that. But at some point, it can even seem uh, kind of like imprisoning because mm -hmm. I was thinking about like Nietzsche and Sard and a lot of the existentialists mm -hmm. who talk about how we have the burden of freedom, you're condemned mm -hmm. to be free, but at the same time, like Nietzsche, you have to overcome the herd mentality. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it requires having to sort of know where you stand hmm. and sometimes i wonder like are you being authentic or are you being narcissistic sometimes in the sense <laughs> that yeah. like today social media is a prime example where you have mm -hmm. like i'll see people talk about dating and things like that how mm -hmm. if they see like a red flag or something like that they'll end the date right away and they're being authentic to themselves and i'm like is that being authentic or is that <sighs> kind of mm. putting some unattainable I ideals mm -hmm. that you can't really reach in a sense, or at least another person mm. cannot. So I think it can kind of be imprisoning and ambiguous at the same time too. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that was really good. And I, I think that's a great point. It makes me think about how the term becomes much more ambiguous and nuanced when we get into the intersubjectivity, right? Like two people, you know, somebody on a date with another human being, that interaction of, of thinking of what it means to be authentic may look different and more difficult to navigate than it is if it's just like, what does it mean to be authentic in my, you know, free flow state of just being an individual in the world, you know, walking in the grass or something. Like mm -hmm. there's something about it that's, it, it, it's radically, now it's like has that observer effect, right? Of like, okay, am I, am, am I being authentic to them, uh, to myself? Like, cause people have certain interpretations of, of us, right? Like of each human mm -hmm. being. So then, then it almost gets to be like, I know something that I can, I, I mean, to, I'll be honest, like kind of can struggle with a little bit. It's just, the question of almost not so much to myself about this ref self-referential, am I being authentic to myself, but it can't help but go there. After the question is, d does that person think I'm being authentic to myself? Oddly enough, and, that, and that's just typically like my, my angle of how I sort of can mm -hmm. deal with it in the negative. Like now we can talk about it in the positive aspects of the authentic, but yeah, I think that's where, you know, it's almost like, oh, I, I thought I was kind of being being myself even though that might look different through different seasons but mm -hmm. then you wonder if if a person maybe comments or makes some sort of um 
statement or, or just it can be a very like <laughs> kind of an innocuous thing right just something something even that's meant to be loving and caring but it can st- suddenly make you think like wait am I being authentic to myself because it seems that person doesn't think I am so who am I <laughs> oh yeah no, <laughs> and, and it, it brings upon all of that potential existential questions um and and I think it does seem to you know beg the question of how how what does it mean? So it almost feels like there's a little bit like there's two categories of like, what does it mean to be authentic to oneself and that self-referentiality, self-refer- right? But then there's the how to be authentic in the midst of others or in the eyes of others or something like that. And obviously that's much, much more difficult to control and <laughs> probably maybe not even something we should really concern ourselves with. However, there can be people who have known us for a very long time and you know, we want to be kind of mindful that maybe they do see something we don't see, but also they aren't in our own headspace and life and world exactly. So it always has to be kind of held in that place of like, I guess, openness, but also not just jumping to, oh, no, maybe I am not myself and and sort of like lose one's bearings entirely um, because of that, but rather get sort of maybe just a little bit more self-skeptical about it. Um, but sorry, one more thing about about what you said on the date. I thought that's really interesting about identifying red flags and and also like narcissism and and how yeah it's 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 the challenging thing is that like the plea to be yourself or be authentic can you could literally be encouraging somebody to be narcissistic right like because if if there's a self skepticism to to kind of create and cultivate the authenticity of self then it's just sort of assumed on what is which may be like in a sense what is is. I want to say, um, well, it just is what it is, but it, there's also this like this combination of we are something kind of core and fundamental, but then we are things that we do that maybe we've patterned or like we've learned from our surroundings or we've had like as a survival response or whatever, you know, just coping mm-hmm. mechanisms or other things. And those things aren't necessarily us, but we might as- attribute them to us, you know, or to being authentic. And so it, it's that's where it gets really tricky um, uh, about where it can become something where, well, we, we can't just kind of carte blanche, like a, assume that inherently to be authentic and to promote authenticity <laughs> is going to be the answer. But it does seem, I think that's why I, I, I sort of um, feel more, how do I say this? I think that some, there's something a little bit more helpful in my mind that in the language Daniel and I use with it, intrinsic motivation, where that mm. seems to be helpful because I think that really ties to this core thing that I mentioned, where it's this core fundamental thing of that human person that is tied to also what they are doing and their drive and their creation. So, and therefore it's less about kind of these identities, right? That we sort of like, am I being authentic to an identity or something like this? Um, It's more to a a particular type of drive. Now, even our drives have to be, uh, you know, we have to get self-skeptical with them as well. But yes, I do, I do, I do believe there is something such as an such as a thing as intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic, which would be like just you know going for the carrot on the carrot stick, you know, chasing mm-hmm. that or doing it just because you're told or for grades or whatever. So, anyways, that <laughs> that was a whole lot. But those are some of the thoughts that were coming to my mind. No, I I like that idea of the intrinsic and extrinsic motivation because as we were kind of hinting at before. I think that authenticity sometimes can be a burden or in a sense where it's like, if you need a, the idea of a self that is sort of immutable, so you can be authentic to that self where with the intrinsic motivation, it's more, what are my ideals or what am I trying to get from this? Am I trying to get fulfillment? Does doing is being a good partner or does when I take the trash out make me feel good or make my partner feel good as opposed to I'm being an authentically good person where it's like, what's your definition of good? What's your definition of a stable person? So I think in that sense, it can be extremely helpful. And also I think in today's culture too, we mistake what we think as like telling the truth. I think it was that movie Glass on me, and I don't remember the line, but there's a character who just keeps kind of just saying very harsh and blunt things. And she's like, Oh, I just say what I think and the truth and I'm being authentic. And he's like, that's not being authentic. He's like, you're just, he's like, anybody can just say what comes off the top of their mind. He's like, authenticity and truth is kind of like saying what matters or what like cuts through. 
And I think that's an important distinction because I think a lot of people on the surface level, that's where almost the narcissism comes in because it's, oh, I'm being authentic to myself. I won't settle for less. I expect this, 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 and this. And it's like, well, are you being stable? Are you doing the same for your partner or for other people? And I think that's where authenticity as well. A lot of times it seems like it's very solipsistic. Like it's just you doing something that you believe is who you are and it's shining or disclosing certain things. But can you be authentic in a vacuum or do you need other people? Because sometimes I'll say or do something and if somebody knows me very well, they'll be like, hey, that's not like you. And in my head, I'm like, no, that is like me. I just am usually quiet or polite, but now mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like speaking my mind. Mm -hmm. But then let's say I get home and I introspect about it. I might be like, hey, is that like me? Mm -hmm. Or do other people know certain things about me that I don't know, even though I think I'm being authentic, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. just because they're able to look at me from the outside yeah yeah no it's 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 great considerations absolutely and I, I think that's awesome you brought up the idea of like just speaking your mind is that authentic because mm -hmm. I was I was thinking about that right before this call actually because I was like you know it's funny because I I was kind of I think that I think this gets exacerbated too in in the world of social media where it's like how much of just being like raw, honest, vulnerable, like I do believe those things are really important. And I, I appreciate deeply when people take the time to be vulnerable and be willing to share from that place that's difficult to, to, to share sometimes because, you know, it can be from a place of helplessness or from a place of like not knowing or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, what can feel kind of weak versus wanting to just present as strong and capable, you know. So I think... I, I think there's a, there's kind of this tension of like, oh, okay. Is that, is that what's more authentic and more what people would, would also like, like more and appreciate more, you know, like, and, and I, I, I think that there's a, there's also kind of a strange thing that social media does where it's like you, you kind of want to be seen and you want to be known, but you also don't want to be at the same time in the sense of like, you don't, it seems like it's a funny place to just be completely transparent because it's not really reality. Like it's not mm -hmm. real human organic engagement. It, uh, it, I mean, it is, I think you can find ways to make it as real as possible and that's great. And that's what I think the benefit of it can be. But a lot of it can also be edited, staged, curated, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I think there's something really hard about that because, um, <clears throat> and I don't know, I think it's probably some balance of like maybe the best litmus test, which I don't know, I often go to this. It's just kind of, to face one's fears like are you are you being afraid to be seen a little bit more in, in who just being a human um and maybe trying to face it in some way if you're going to be making content or writing or something like this uh or but then there's also the uh, the opposite of like is this just trying to grab attention and like seem really real and raw and you know just kind of get that get that attention in, in like a negative in a negative way um in the sense that like it's kind of using it for just for the metrics you know um mm -hmm. now i think if you're using it maybe again just to be human you know <laughs> just try to actually show that like i'm a human you know and, and this is kind of or, or and it doesn't even have to be in the raw like you know messiness it can be but also people just showing more about themselves and their own dreams passions things that light them up too like that's that's a very cool thing and um but but yeah i do i do think there it runs it's like a weird it's sort of a strange thing to know. Like, I, it, that's what's really fascinating to me is that we do have this whole new level of like, if you're not able to be as raw and vulnerable on social media, are you not really being authentic? Or is it just choosing to not engage in that space in a way that is um, as candid, I suppose? Like, maybe one just decides, okay, well, I'm just going to be try to be as much as I can. Like, if, if one wants to have this value of like being authentic, which I think we usually do as humans in the sense that we we desire to be ourselves because we're more congruent in that sense like then you do it with the people that you really know you because you're like well they're the people who really know me like they talk with me they actually have a sense of who I am like on social media there's always going to be that gap you know but then I think about like how sometimes there are people who have either been 
somewhat inspiring or encouraging or it just makes me happy that they're like pursuing cool stuff, you know? And I'm like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, they're, maybe they're doing so well because they're so, they're so themselves and they just show that, but themselves, what, what do I even mean by that? Like, I've never met this person, you know, like, can you be your, it, so, I mean, yes, I think you can in a sense be yourself on social media, but it's just, it's just funny. Like we've never had to kind of consider that question of being yourself to, now, I don't know, in a way, sorry, I'm going off a little bit. All oh, no, place. please. I, I, I will say this one more thing. We kind of had this dimension on like, um, if we think about metaphysical and spiritual dimensions of like, could uh, just figure out, like, just pick a saint, you know, like, could a saint be real to someone who never met them because they'd already passed on? And like, in that sense, it, there are things about the internet and social media that almost remind me of like this metaphys metaphysical dimension, even though it's not quite that directly, but it has the same aura and, and maybe considerations. And I don't know if it's just a complete counterfeit of it or something, but I do wonder sometimes, like, I guess there, this isn't completely novel in human history. Like I want to say it is, cause I think it is, but there's also I'm like, well, okay, maybe if I want to get a little bit more abstract or expanded, maybe people have encountered this with having certain saints or people they looked up to, but they were not people they ever met. They just knew about them, like through stories and, and proverbs and like, you know, um, narratives that would kind of boost morale and things like this you could also think about this through archetypes or something like that mm -hmm. but yeah so anyways i there's a lot there but I, I think that those are some of my my thoughts about authenticity because there is a strange feeling of of like you know and it, it I, I know we've talked a little bit about this like i don't really care about you know numbers but i do i do care about human connection like connect connection and mm -hmm. like i think that for me it's like sometimes i wonder if it's like there can feel like this strange question in the back of the head, in, uh, in the back of my head, which I may never have had, or maybe in a different way. Um, just that with social media, it's like, am I being like, am I sort of showing enough of who I am? But then again, I'm like, does anyone care? Like, there's also so many other social media people out there that are obviously doing this like much more regularly. And it's maybe more their thing. Maybe they're a little bit more extroverted, or they just don't think as much about it. They'll just do it, and that's fine. Like, we're all made differently. But yeah, so I. It's a lot. It's sometimes a thing that happens, and I, I mean, I instead of going into sort of like the crazy paranoid question area about that, um, I think which can be quite paralyzing. It's just to rather quiet those things and just do what you need to do and do what you're mm -hmm. already doing instead of kind of adding another layer of like, well, I better do this, otherwise I'm not being like authentic. <laughs> um, because I think there are still ways. Like the philosophy realm is just so different. If in being honest in a social media presence in that way it's just very different than a lot of other um mm -hmm. you know types of people on Inst on instagram or whatever so it's like well you still offer that potential through maybe conversation or through like dialogue it's just again it looks a little different and obviously it doesn't always match like the hyper aesthetic um you know picture type of <laughs> um mm -hmm. currency that is instagram you know so anyways that that was a whole lot but what are your thoughts what are your thoughts christopher uh, I, I can, I think I'd pick it up on what you're putting out. Um, when you were talking about the saints and social yeah. media, it was making me think of like parasocial relationships and celebrity. Yeah. And I've seen like friends that I've known for years post like a selfie and then they'll be like, this was me a year ago with hair extensions and like eyelashes and lip filters. And then this is me <laughs> now without it. And it took me a while to post this and I feel better about myself. And I think people appreciate the vulnerability when people post like that. Mm -hmm. But then I always pick up a hint where they're like, but I also liked how I was in the, in the before picture, like with all that stuff. Right. And I think it's people want to put people on pedestals, including themselves. But mm -hmm. at the same time, they appreciate vulnerability. Yeah. But it's kind of like not wanting to meet your heroes in a sense. Hmm. Because like most of my favorite authors or philosophers are terrible people. And I look at like myself and things I do and it's like I try to appear honest and vulnerable in my writing or conversations and when I'm talking to others. But the problem with that is when we do that, sometimes people don't like that or we don't like that because like sometimes I feel like a lot of my writing will come off as a repetitive or just kind of like this existential malaise 
Mm-hmm. And I was talking to one of my friends about that, and she was like, well, right for you, she's like, if that's you being, like, honest and vulnerable, and we've talked about that as well, that's yeah. all that matters, like, you writing true or whatever you're doing, just being honest and authentic in that capacity, and I think that's important. But as I get older, I guess I'm a little bit more forgiving of, like, the girl I mentioned, like her before picture, where it's Mm -hmm. like, just because you have fake eyelashes in or like filters, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's Mm -hmm. like, that's you cultivating a self that you take pride in or just makes you Mm -hmm. feel good. And I think we all do that to a certain degree. Like Mm -hmm. there's a passage of Freud going around where he was talking about, he didn't think the audience understood him, but all that mattered to him was that he sounded like he understood it. And Mm -hmm. it's like Freud is one of our most brilliant psychoanalysts. And it's just funny to see somebody that like I put on a pedestal at times, just be like, yeah, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about, but as long as I (laughs) seem smart, because we all crave kind of the other validating us and as much as i say like i don't care if like somebody reads my Substack or like somebody watches something i post deep down though in a sense like we are still tribal beings Mm -hmm. in the sense that i think we we crave being seen we crave the other acknowledging us Mm -hmm. and i think we feel better when it's us without the mask on, because then we're like, hey, that's who I want to be, or that's my ideal, or that's me on my worst day. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that honesty being appreciated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, But at the same time, I think it's okay to kind of blur the line sometimes. I'm not saying to lie or to obfuscate, but at times it's okay to like, put on a mask of who you want to be seen as, if that's going to make you a better person in a sense, or it's an ideal you aspire to. And that could be that intrinsic motivation you're talking about or extrinsic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes me think about that was all really great. And it makes me think about what you're saying with just the person being completely candid, like just saying what they, whatever comes to the top of their head and that being authentic. There's a way in which, you know, I think that sometimes being mindful of like, maybe I'm, I'm not going to say that. It's not to like, again, like I said, obfuscate the truth, but thinking through like being, being a bit more wise about like, is that, would that be like good to be saying right now or not? And that's where I think it's, I think we have a challenging moment in the sense that it's like learning to tote that line, right? If like being able to actually have vulnerability and honesty and knowing what like cultivating spaces where you can do that. So you have an outlet for that. It's really important, super important. Um, But then also the presentation, right? Like there's a presentation sometimes, which might be more like the persona, which is to put on, you know, kind of like put on a good face and, you know, clean up a bit and and sort of show that that too, or sort of say, you know, I'm going to try my best to sort of like present from that place. Uh, it is interesting. I do I do wonder if it just boils down. I mean, I always appreciate Hegel helping out on reminding me that there is a dialectic of these things where mm-hmm. like there's a dialectic of the performance and the persona, what, what you put on for people, not because you're hiding per se, but just mm-hmm. because, I don't know if it's like, I think of it positively generally, like a sense of self-respect or like of care for oneself to like mm-hmm. dress, like just put on something that's like, you know, decently nice that you feel nice in and you can, you know, so I think like where maybe you just kind of, there is a part of you that's like, I just feel like, you know, curling up in bed. Like I don't really Mm. want to do the things, but I kind of have to, or I'm going to make myself do it. And is that authentic? Like I, I, there's a way, I think that's great what you said though. Maybe it's like, there's an authenticity to what you're becoming, like the thing you desire to work toward or become. Um, so yeah but there's also the the sense like i mentioned about allowing the 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 realities of like being human to also be present and not kind of try to just shy away from that or hide it or or anything like that it's just like well that's that's also a part of 
of who I am. <laughs> like it's just part, part of who I am in the sense of it's part of all of who we are as human beings, where we have like our, our, our frailty shortcomings or challenges, but then we also have these great like moments of, yeah, of like the things that are that are great that we want to celebrate or we, we feel more inclined to share right because we're like this is this is exciting or this is just something i'm i'm reading or this whatever it is you know but yeah i do, i i tend to like appreciate the that that sort of bothness um but i i think like you were saying about in getting older and having a little bit more of a tempered view where it's like you know people are just i think there's kind of that that place too where it's like okay instead of just um thinking of it like one way or the other it's like well i guess there's going to be some folks out there who are going to be mm. you know taking more pictures of like look don't worry i have a messy house too or like you know things mm. like that you know uh but there's also the folks who like never show that side. like though they they might show it a little bit in stories or something but like they're not going to necessarily dedicate a post to being like hey mm. we're humans that are getting i have a messy house too you know exactly <laughs> they might just post the stuff they're like loving doing or whatever like just that they lights them up and i i think there's a i guess in a way there's a place for both of those um but i think it's important to not maybe just to realize that and then sort of do what again it, it can sound a little vague but to sort of do ultimately what you you feel deep in your heart you you're supposed to be doing not comparing it to like the other people <laughs> what they're what they're doing and what's authentic in, in for them um but again i do i do think there's something that does require a, a sort of a sense of self that is also in the context of others and that sense of becoming and cultivation for authenticity. Otherwise it can just get very much stuck into those, um, those identities or those things that are like these unrealistic expectations of a partner, for example. And mm -hmm. it's just like, are you not? Yeah. I, I think that's a really important area to talk about it regarding though, because it's like, are, is that really authenticity or is that just, believing there's this like magical unicorn person that mm -hmm. is everything you've ever <laughs> hoped to dream of, <laughs> you know, but yeah, sure. There's some jerks out there. So like, yeah, you do want to have a standard, but you know, it's also like, you know, it, is this actually authenticity or is this just being like incredibly unrealistic about what human beings are like? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think um, just to break in, I, I, I agree yeah, yeah, with that, too. but I, I think even if there is that like, fairy person or like ideal that doesn't mm -hmm. exist but we want to exist yeah that's authentic in the sense that it's you're trying to reach a mountaintop like mm -hmm. it may not exist but at least you have like somewhere to orient yourself to mm -hmm. that's where i was thinking too authenticity is kind of like uh, when I read Zen of the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Rob Percy, he talks about, like, quality and how everybody yeah. kind of knows what quality is, even if they can't yeah. define it. Because he was talking about, like, when you read uh, different papers, most of his students, when he was teaching, would be like, oh, yeah, that's an A paper, that's a B paper. Mm -hmm. Like, everybody pretty much knew where the spectrum lied. And mm -hmm. I think the same goes kind of with ethics to some degree obviously like the big topics like abortion and like other things like that it's going to be a little bit more disagreement but when it comes to if i do something or like i was talking to my therapist and i think i was talking about i didn't want to go to this barbecue and she was telling me it's okay not to go because i was like being mm -hmm. true to myself but deep down part of me still felt bad because I felt like it was something I should have done. So it's like, even though I have an authority figure telling me, hey, no, it's okay, my, like, super ego or conscience yeah. kind of telling me, like, no, I should have went. So it's kind of, I think we have an internal compass of sorts that sometimes mm -hmm. matches the societal compass and sometimes doesn't. Yeah. And authenticity is kind of trying to navigate the two in a sense or like finding the most common ground because they're not always going to be congruent like if if you were hiding and frank in nazi germany you are being an unethical person according to nazi ethics but you're being an ethical person in today's standards so it kind of is amphorous in that sense always changing so i think it's important to 
also forgive yourself a little bit because like I'm a perfectionist, even though I'm very far from perfect. And sometimes that'll prevent me from even doing things mm -hmm. just because I expect like a gold standard. And I think being authentic in that sense would be, sorry, I feel like I'm all, all over the place, but would just be to do something even yeah. poorly because at least mm -hmm. you're being authentic in trying yeah. in the sense. Yeah. And I think people respect that. Yeah, no, that's that's so good. Two things came up for me with what you were saying. Um, just the one thing on partners and and this idea of like you said something about kind of a mountain you're climbing. Like there's something that's mm -hmm. a higher goal, right? In I do think it's. I mean, this is why it's so it's so tricky and and nuanced. Not tricky in the sense that it's like super hard to, to ultimately kind of um, uphold. Well, it can be hard to uphold actually. But I guess what I mean to say is like it's it's a it's both recognizing that people are not perfect and there's not the unicorn person out there. At the same mm. time, it's still saying that I I can value you know, certain things and desire to see somebody who like is in line with those values and who themselves values those things in their own kind of intrinsic way. And that mm -hmm. being that, that being like the sense of perfect, right. Where it's almost like you obviously no humans perfect, but there's a perfect for each other, which sounds kind of cliche, but I do think there's something to that. Whereas there is a type of perfecting in that relationship where there's a work, there's a work that's a, is done by both people. That is a beautiful perfecting work that, is on both people but they and, and in that way the person does kind of become a unicorn person even though they're not a, a perfect human being just because none of us are perfect hum human beings and we will never necessarily find like somebody who's just going to answer all of our hopes and dreams and read our minds and know what we want and all that stuff like that doesn't that doesn't necessarily exist but you can i do believe something really wonderful and, and incredible can exist in, in another human being that is you know, incredibly wonderful. And, and again, in that sense, kind of like a unicorn um, because mm. they, they were, they were willing to, to be there and to be open and to work with you and work together, you know, um, and do that own self work, you know, that then can present that type of perfecting work in a relationship. I wanted to say, to say that. And then, um, Oh no, I was like, I was going to, I was like, I'll remember what I was just about to say. I'll jump to the first point. <laughs> like, well, I do the point. same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it'll come back. It'll come back. But I think, um, oh yeah, what you're saying about the the inner compass and yeah, I, I think that is, you know, that's what's tricky. I mean, I think there, that's why it's difficult not to um, get, it's, it's difficult to talk about authenticity or understand it without like having a sense of like what are what does it mean to be like human which is i know it's a huge question but like mm -hmm. what does it mean to to be like what are the sense of the, the good the true and the beauty and the beautiful sorry for for being a human because i think for me like there was something about wisdom that's always kind of appealed to me um i don't know why but i, I mean maybe because i feel like i could see the fruits of it mm -hmm. and um so for, for me, like there was something about wisdom being like a, an avenue for, for, for beauty, truth, and goodness and, and seeing glimmers of that, even if it's like in the, you know, in the transience, you know, it's not always there in the sense that, you know, the world doesn't always have this constant, you know, spotlight of that, but there's, there are those glimmers and, and sometimes there will be a spotlight or a highlight of it. But what I mean to say is like, there, there's something about kind of like making a, I want to say almost it, well, I was gonna, I was gonna say either it's gonna be Nietzschean or Kierkegaardian, which some people may think of as different, but I kind of see them in in a parallel in a strange way mm -hmm. sometimes. Oh, where absolutely. Nietzsche, has, yeah, where Nietzsche has like this very big emphasis on creating your own values, and then you know Nietzsche, I mean Kierkegaard would be like this kind of Kierkegaardian leap of faith, where there's a, a way in which you you kind of have to choose your authenticity, if that makes sense, and the, mm -hmm. that choice is based off of what you value and what you're going to value. Um, and so, therefore, it might, you know, obviously, as one is in their becoming and going through different seasons of life, I do think that there's going to be different things that, like, are, quote, unquote, authentic about the person that might change in time so that it doesn't seem like it seems maybe a little different, but it doesn't mean that they're not, like, themselves, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's that they're constantly refinding and rediscovering themselves in that, um, in that process and in that 
the choice of that authenticity that's in line with those values, if that makes any sense. And it's, and therefore it's, it's much more of a kind of creative process than it is a, is it, than it is like comparing the test to the test, um, rubric right it's not just mm -hmm. doing that like oh there's authenticity and how much is it to the rubric i mean in a sense yeah i guess if you're like but you're making your rubric and then you're kind of constantly um like a google you, doc what's that i was gonna say it's kind of like a google doc that you're constantly like trimming and editing and changing yeah, as yeah. You go much, on. yeah much more like that i do think there are certain things that are going to have to tether one to like mm -hmm. that's why i think the choices is, is is kind of can be crucial in the sense that you you're choosing a type of value that you want to be authentic to right and that mm -hmm. That is something that is kind of tethering. So there is a sort of maybe a little bit like it's checking in with the rubric, but there is no rubric in, in the sense of it being like um, universal. It maybe in so mm -hmm. much as the concept is universal, but it's it's so particular to to your life that it, it can't not necessarily be even understood or explained as such to those around you because mm -hmm. they've got their little rubric and their value oh, yeah. of whatever it is let's just i don't know what like, let's just take my thing on wisdom like wise it might look actually quite different i do think there is a type of perennial wisdom through the ages i so I, that is ultimately linked to you know a, a sense of truth um so it, you know in some ways it's like well shouldn't that not be that different but people are all at different stages of their journey so um so that's why i think of it that way i i, I hope that made sense but yeah i think there's something quite interesting and necessary about that choosing um but and one thing just one one more thing like a, a more personal note of authenticity like i it's funny because i'm an identical twin so for me being authentic was being with my twin sister being twins you know like that was that was kind of who it meant to be me and so when like we're still twins and we're still best of friends you know but we live we now have separate lives where we used to live literally as roommates our whole lives and so becoming off or being authentic had to sort of take, had to, had to learn how to do that or whatever that is exactly as we're trying to kind of circle it. But doing that had to look different, you know, and, and, and it definitely had the dissonance of, well, am I, how can I be myself if I'm not with that, which constituted as myself in my, and that's where I think the identity thing, I understand why it's, it's appealing as getting our authenticity from certain identities, but it's also, um, I want to say a little bit fragile, like it's not as empty fragile in the, you know, in the scene to leave sense where like, mm -hmm. we, we do ultimately have shifts and changes in our lives. And, um, again, I'm very grateful to still have my twinship intact and, and it's a beautiful relationship. Um, but it has to look different because there's a massive letting go and leaving the same home and being in different homes and different lives, um, married to different people and having our own kids and things like that. So it's just authenticity. It, it's like you. I mean, it's not necessarily some sort of novel crazy point here. It's just, this, it's just, this, I do think it's important though, because, and I mentioned to, this to you um, uh, privately, but if we don't accept the different seasons of life and the fact that we will have things that change about us, and this is coming from my sort of struggle with it, where am I being authentic to myself in other people's eyes, right? But then we will kind of have this sense of like, what's wrong with me? I'm not being authentic. You know, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not doing what I usually would do, like I also would used to consider myself as an open book, you know, I'd be like, oh, I'm just, I'm an open book, you know, <laughs> and maybe I am like on a personal relationship. Per Hi, baby, what's up? I did a Rubik's Cube tutorial video. You did a Ru Rubik's Cube tutorial video? Yeah. That's awesome. But it was, but it was a tall Rubik's Cube. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh -huh. one Rubik's Cube. Okay, well, thank you for telling me about that. Um, I bet you're gonna. If I top it, then I mm -hmm. get my own Rubik's cube. Okay, sounds good, baby. My oh, own, your my own Rubik's cube. Okay, yeah. and my own photo done. And your own bucket done. Okay. Titan team. Thank you, sweetie. My name is Titan team. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another authentic moment. <laughs> Absolutely. My littlest is like. My older son has like is really into Rubik's cubes, and so mm -hmm. the littler, my littler son is like, I want to get one just for myself, and if I learn how to solve it, then I can get myself one, like buy myself a Rubik's cube. It's just so cute. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's just adorable hearing them talk about different things. Um, but yeah, I, anyways, I, I just think that is important because, like I said, like we talked about at the beginning of like this potential prison 
I mean, mm-hmm. and I think I can still feel it. Like, I'll be honest, there are times when I think about it too, in terms of what am I achieving? You know, like, am, am mm-hmm. I optimizing? Like, am I doing the most I could or the, and it's like, because I mm-hmm. associate that with being authentic and, and I don't know, I guess successful, even though I don't usually think about that term if, mm-hmm. you know, on a conscious level, but maybe unconsciously that is part of it. Um, so yeah, I do think there's something about that, which is a good, in a part, in, in some ways it's good to want to like, optimize and you know do make what do well with what you have in the sense of like being a good steward of it um Mm -hmm. but it's just it can also be like where you start playing this game of comparison constantly which i think authenticity can have that side of it where the whole concept can it does it it, it's a good thing and a bad thing in a way where you can compare Mm -hmm. like okay well am i doing the things that i like comparison can be typically thought of as bad and i do think isn't it like that phrase where it's like comparison is a thief of joy Mm -hmm. and i do think that it is quite like that um but we do have to be honest with ourselves that we use comparison to also help become better in things Mm -hmm. right like okay i'm doing better in that area or maybe i'm i'm actually doing i'm i'm and too much focus on that could be quite quite can be negative it depends it depends but what i mean to say is like there is some use value in in comparison but on the whole especially in our hyper like media saturated world and and social media world it's i don't know the comparison thing is like it 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 can be quite um debilitating and rather i think it should be how am i being inspired or learning Mm -hmm. learning um so that i can then bring that into a place of like allowing myself to do and be what i'm doing and being but also doing and being sometimes means doing things you don't always want to do on mm. um, pushing yourself a little bit so yeah yeah no i i definitely uh can see what you're saying there i think that comparison to ties into what you're talking about before about uh different types of motivation mm-hmm. so sometimes i think it's okay to compare yourself to who you want to be or mm-hmm. to who you once were. So yeah. like, let's say you used to work out a lot or write a lot or whatever, and then it's like, you wanna get back into doing that. So it's like, you're using your old self as motivation for your new self. Mm-hmm. And I think that's okay. It only becomes a problem when it's, we compare ourselves to the standards that are unattainable or, right. If, for example, like you were talking about being an identical twin, like if you were trying to hold yourself by the same standard you were growing up, like you're both married, you have your own lives, it'd probably be very difficult to still be roommates or things like that and to compare yourselves to how your relationship was when you were growing up versus where it is now. I'm sure you can do things that you used to do back then, which will help, but it's all about goes back to authenticity just being a sense of becoming you have that i like your idea of the rubric you have kind of a standard you're measuring yourself up to but you also have enough wiggle room to where it's like okay (laughs) i can't live up to that anymore or that's unattainable or this is what Mm -hmm. i am drawn to like you said wisdom before Mm -hmm. but it could be you could change that to just the wisdom of admitting somebody's human or things like that it doesn't have Mm -hmm. to be that somebody is a tenured professor or anything like that so i I definitely can see that and then just one other thing i wanted to touch on real quick was the kierkegaard nietzsche thing Yeah, yeah i think they're both very similar in that Nietzsche wanted you to avoid the herd mentality and to pretty much be true to yourself, make your own uh, ethics, your own sense of truth, and become that. And then Kierkegaard wanted you to take that leap of faith and have that unconditional commitment if you take like the Hubert Mm -hmm. Dreyfus sense of fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think both of those can coexist in the sense that it's you're just, if other things don't agree with you, it's not like you're ignoring like absolute truths or like Mm -hmm. spitting in the face of like facts, but it's more so you're just like, okay, I'm going to believe that I can do this crazy thing or the whole Orwellian, I think it was Orwell, where it's like telling the truth can be a revolutionary act. So it's just being authentic and attaining those ideals, or at least trying to. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I I think so, too. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, no, that that was really good. And I, I um, I, I remembered what I was, <laughs> what I was saying. Oh, perfect. My youngest um came in earlier. I, just just the idea of like um, and I think we we touched on it a little bit um mm -hmm. earlier, but but basically just and thanks for what you said on on Nietzsche and Kierkegaard. I thought that was really mm -hmm. good and helpful. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I I was just saying about like being an open book and how how much how much it's like oh you know um. I mean, I'm a bit of a hobbit in some ways. So like my mm, social circles are, are much smaller just because, you know, I used to be at like a big college and I lived with a lot of people. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, when you live out in the country, it's just it's just a world of difference in terms of like how many people can you even be an open book to? Mm -hmm. um, True. So, so it's different. And I so even those type of contextual things can help us remember that like, OK, yeah, authenticity may look different. But I do think there's a difference between transparency and authenticity. Right. Like mm -hmm. there's. um and I'm sure Han talks about it. I, I think he, I think that I've heard that he has. <laughs> I was, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I, like I've told you, I definitely want to read more Han. But, um, and I think that's where it can be tricky because, like, actually, um, and I'm I'm forgetting exactly what the what what the etymology was with authenticity. But I think it had something to do with that, like, reconnection to basically like making one's own choice, right? Like, it's almost mm -hmm. related to the word uh, authority, right? Like, mm -hmm. authenticity comes from that root. And that's where I think that choice of this working rubric, right, that can't necessarily compare to anyone else's, but it is yours. And you are in that editing kind of that process of like creating it and tweaking it and adjusting it while still kind of upholding it as a, as a limitation, but also so that you can learn a way of like living in some sort of uh, manner with like, I do believe that's another thing that I think Nietzsche is great about is like mm -hmm. understanding like limits actually allow sometimes for you to have a type of fullness that you could not mm -hmm. have apart from that type of limit, you know? Um, so, but it's a limit you, you impose upon yourself. <laughs> and so anyways, I think that that's, what's cool about like actually getting back to the etymology of the word is um, it, it seems to be a, it actually seems to maybe fit with that concept of like a choice, you know, where you do something of your own, of your own choice that then becomes mm -hmm. what you create to be authenticity, not again, not just kind of always, you know doing this sort of thing of like this um oh am i being am i being my authentic self as if it's somewhere that we can go and compare it to right mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, that's true. um so yeah and i i, I do think that um yeah I, th I think it's helpful it's really helpful for me to talk to talk through it with you because it's funny like how, again how i usually maybe ex experience or struggle with it is more like how do other people think and i do i have over the years like to, to be honest just gotten a lot more accepting that right you can't control what other people think and it's not that it doesn't matter entirely it does but it also it also to a degree doesn't have any it won't it can't you can't ultimately let it have bearing on like what you're going to continue to pursue you know like mm -hmm. you can you can acknowledge it and respect it and and say you know i understand where you're coming from and i appreciate that it's coming from love um but then also continue to pursue what you are doing in that choice of authenticity um and, and and I think, yeah, I do think there's a lot of confusion, though, in, in the mainstream about it, where it can lead to a lot of, like, challenge and, and disillusionment. Because, you know, again, from the perspective of someone who does think, oh, you're not being authentic to yourself, they feel like a huge loss, right? They're like, mm -hmm. you're not the person I knew you to be, and that's scary, and that's hard. But th that's why I do think there's, like, this, it, yes, it's this creating and this choice and this becoming, but there is something funny about it where... You have to be in order to mm -hmm. be coming. You have to mm -hmm. you have to be, have that sense of that being in order to be have the becoming. So mm -hmm. that is the core. That is like I oh there's this oh, sorry, I just have to mention <laughs> no, it. There's this, there's this incredible anime that I love so much. Mm -hmm. It's um Ano Anohana. Anyway, so Anohana, really great anime. Highly recommend mm -hmm. it. Um okay. and I really don't want to give like I hate giving stuff away. I hate it mm -hmm. so much because I'm like, you can never experience these things yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if I even tell you this, so I'm not. I'm actually gonna leave out like the really important detail here. Okay. But okay. What, but what I want to say is that there's something about this the scene in this movie that I just like bawled. I just like cried mm -hmm. because, and I saw it so evidently in in interaction. Like that's why for me, I'm like anime is so helpful mm -hmm. <laughs> because oh, yeah. there's so many deep like truths that it reveals in this in like in a in a narrative aesthetically too it's it's beautiful anyway oh, yes. so 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 it's just like it's fascinating because sometimes you can be sitting right there and you're like i'm here you know and the person's mm -hmm. like where are you and you're like i'm here and so i think it i think it does re require us like letting down 
our guard a little bit and letting down our presuppositions so that we can just have the true encounter with that person, which then you realize suddenly when you do let go of what you think the person should be, you're like, oh, yeah, it's, the, it's you that it's you all along that little, you know, mm-hmm. like for my my nickname, like Shelly, you've always been, you know, like mm-hmm. it's that it's that like, oh, it's that core of who you that almost I want to say it feels childlike. I don't mm-hmm. not childish, but childlike that childlike mm-hmm. spark and person that you really are. And it's like, oh, you're right there. Like you haven't gone anywhere. Like I think you have, mm-hmm. but you are actually right there before me and you're, you, you're not gone. You're, you're becoming, and it can mm-hmm. get very confused with like a sense of loss, but it's actually in a way it is, but it's also a gaining. It's a, it's a type of rediscovery of that person, mm-hmm. which is, it's a rediscovery as in like, um, what's that amazing quote that Daniel says a lot that I should know, but it's like <laughs> to know your beginnings for the first time or something like that. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, uh, it's a super important thing. Um, but, but yeah, what I mean to say is like, it, it's kind of that. And I mm-hmm. think that there's something I, I'm really, really happy we spoke about the topic because I mm-hmm. think when there isn't some when there aren't more robust conversations about this, it can become either superficially very just like a kind of a, like you feel like you know what it is until something kind of happens to disrupt it, which can be quite mm-hmm. devastating. Or you have that sense of like just this constant sense of like, you know, oh, of loss and, and, and comparison and like confusion. You know what I'm saying? So I think mm-hmm. if we really get into talking about what authenticity is, um, or what it could be at least, <laughs> it's it's it can be quite helpful. And and it, I've really benefited from talking about it with you as well. So um, yeah, I appreciate your time, Christopher. Please. Feel well, thank thank you for having me. I, I really yeah. uh, I appreciated your time and talking about it. And I have to check out that anime too. Oh, Sounds please. interesting. Oh please! I I don't know if you're like more into slice of life or like some of the action or or what what you might be into, um. But this is a little bit is a little bit more like slice of life, um. But uh-huh. it's it, it's quite lovely and, gosh, it just it pulls on my heartstrings. That's for sure. <laughs> as long as it's not uh, as devastating as Attack on Titan, I'll, uh, I'll give it a chance. I can't I can't go through that again. <laughs> I haven't been able to watch an anime since that has yeah. finished. Like I'm not I'm not yeah. even. Sure. Yeah, it's like no, I don't even way. know <laughs> what to do, what, what what I can even think about that. So, no, I agree with you. But yeah, no, it's been it's been a joy, truly, Christopher. Thanks for talking with me, and um, I've enjoyed it immensely. So, thanks for your time. Thank you as well. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.